So now I'm here with Richard Reed, co-founder of Innocent Drinks and also Jam Jar Investments. Hello, Richard. Thank you so much for speaking to us today. Aren't we having a lovely time? We are indeed. So I just took part in Richard's talk. It was really, really good. Very interesting. I took notes myself because there were a lot of great points there. But first, I'd like to, for you to tell the viewers, Richard, how did you have the idea for Innocent Drinks in the first place and how did it all start to take off? Well, firstly, it was born out of friendship. So it was a story of myself and two closest friends wanting to set up a business together because we figured doing a business together would be a wonderful vehicle in which to drive through life and so it has been. Secondly then we had to come up, so what would our business do? The idea for Innocent Smoothies in particular, we were inspired by a hangover. We were away on snowboarding weekend trying to come up with ideas, we were hungover and we thought we need something fresh and healthy that's going to do ourselves some good. Oh totally. <laughs> Not what I normally say publicly, but um, yeah, we needed something healthy to balance the bad. Uh, so we thought smoothies, that should do it. Now, you said in, during your talk about um, putting out the product at a music festival. Where did, you, where did that idea come from? The idea of doing the, the simple market test just came, it solved a real problem. We needed to know, were we mad or, because we thought they were great. Our parents thought they were great, but they're going to say that anyway. We needed some people that didn't know us that had paid good money for it to tell us that they loved it. That's what the market test was all about. And it was really simple. It was just a stall at the music festival that just had a sign above it that said, should we give up our jobs to make these smoothies? Had a bin that said yes, and had a bin that said no, and had 500 bottles of homemade smoothies that we'd made ourselves. And we asked people to buy them, drink them, vote with the empty bottle. And we made a commitment to each other but if the yes bin was full at the end of the weekend, we'd go in on that Monday morning and resign. And that yes bin was full, so that's what we did. And that really was how we got started. It was what gave us the confidence. It's what gave us the sort of the kick up the bum. And we've been doing it ever since. Were there any scary moments at any time in your life where you thought, well, maybe I shouldn't be doing this because it might not work? The, my experience of being an entrepreneur is totally one of assuming it's gonna fail. We never thought it was gonna work. I mean. And nor should you really, because statistically, it is much more likely to fail. But what we were more scared of is the idea of not trying. We were more scared of not giving it a go. We figured, look, let's give it a go. As long as you don't bet the family home. Well, think of Dr. Pepper. What's the worst that can happen? If you do, you start and try and set up your own business and it fails, you'll have learned a colossal amount, which will set you up with much more likely to be successful the second time. Or if it works, it works. Happy days. So you can't lose. You either win small, which is you get the learnings, or you win big, which is you get the results. Richard, what's been your most challenging time, would you say? My most challenging time is in 2008, where we lost a third of our sales almost overnight. Our supplier that made all our smoothies went bust and said they couldn't make smoothies for anymore. That we, the bank wanted the money back that we borrowed from them and we couldn't pay them, so they were going to foreclose on the business. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. We had to make people redundant, we had to raise money, we had to find a new supplier. It was the nadir of the storm, but we got through it. And actually what happens is, as Margaret Thatcher would say, never let a good crisis go to waste. What it meant was we had to, we stopped doing the nonsense stuff, we refocused on what was important, which is getting beautiful, healthy, natural, delicious drinks to people and don't get in the way of that. And the business came out stronger. Uh, we live to tell the tale. And you were noticed by Coca-Cola, can you tell us about that? Yeah, I mean Coca-Cola rang us from the second year we were in business and we'd always say the same thing. It's really nice to hear from you guys. Um, by all means, send us some free coke, <laughs> uh, but we're not looking for funding. Uh, in year 10, we ran into trouble. We were like, oh, hi, yeah, if you'd, you know, we'd, yeah, we're well, funding, why not? So it, it was good to, have, good to have, here's a rule that I was given, make friends with people before you need them. They were, they were good guys. Hopefully they thought the same about us. When we needed some money, we, we, we ran Coca-Cola. And there, there was a time obviously that you decided to move on and sell the business. What, what was that like? Was that kind of like you wanted to hold on or were you ready to move on? Oh, look, I'm a really, really lucky guy. You know, we left 15 years to the day that we started. It was the perfect time. I wouldn't have wanted to leave a day earlier. I wouldn't have wanted to stay a day more. We've stood down. The last job we did was appoint the management team to run the business. It's guys that have been, we've worked with now for years and years and years at Innocence. It was an entirely innocent takeover of Innocent. Not a single person lost their job. We'd given shares to everyone in the business, so everyone made money. And now the business has flourished. It's better. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. It's a better business now than it was then when we were running it. Because after 15 years, whether you 
even if you even if you're good, and I'm not even saying we were good, but even if you're good, you still you get into a bit of re repetition. But the guys, the new guys, everyone got an up, everyone got promoted. Everyone had their ideas. The business has flourished. We've, the business has never made more healthy products, more delicious products. It's never given more money to charity. Everything, it's, all the things we set out for it to do, it's doing it better without us. We just sit. We're now like the coaches. We sit in the stands, or you know, rallying the troops. We go in for the board meetings, and yeah, yeah, we've gone from being the athletes to the coach, much easier as well. So now you've got Jam Jar Investments. Can you tell us about how that idea came about? First of all, yeah, Jam Jar Investments is the angel investing. Sorry, excuse me, the angel investing fund set up by myself, Adam, and John. We have a very simple mission. We want to help entrepreneurs boat go their boat go faster. We put in time, money, network experience on on in in a way that helps them chase their dreams. We we recognise how fortunate we are to have the success that we've had. It, it, it's an unusual thing. It doesn't happen often. We want to take the insights and the experience we've got to help other people have that success too, because it's it's a wonderful thing. It's it made our lives much better. How does it feel for you having sort of starting right from scratch, building a business up and now being able to advise others? What's that like? Well, look, you're conscious of the fact that just because you've done it once and it was successful doesn't mean you're any good. It could be that we just got lucky. So I don't for one second presuppose to know the answers. And of course, there's no one right way. There's only the way that's right for the individual. But what I do like doing is being helpful. You know, I think the purpose of life really is to help other people. So. If we're in a scenario where entrepreneurs come to us and want our advice and it helps them make the right calls, that's a very rewarding thing. And it also means, quite frankly, I don't have to sort of stay up to midnight worrying like I used to when it was me making the decisions. So, as I said, the best analogy is we've gone from being the athletes on the track to the coach now, supporting, developing, helping the athletes. It's rewarding, it's exciting, it's not as hard work. Hi, I'm Chrissy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10pm on my channel Sky203. Visit chrissybshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page The Chrissy B Show.